Uh, this is awkward. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your new here. Hey, hello. I'm Lydia here. Scribbles. So, if, as you read in the title, today's video is about debunking PTSD and trauma. Also, before this video starts, I wanted to quickly say that I am actually doing a giveaway at the moment. The link will be in the description down below and it is on screen. The giveaway is for a free, fully customised self care box. I'll leave a link somewhere on this video. So this video is for anybody who struggles with trauma, PTSD. This is for those who have experienced trauma. This is this is for those with a trauma disorder. This is for those who want to understand trauma. So what are some of the trauma disorders? Just a brief little list. There's DID, OSDD, PTSD, CPTSD, other dissociative disorders such as personalization, realization, both things I've, I've diagnosed with, and so many other mental health conditions that stem from trauma. PTSD, depersonalization, derealization are three of the main conditions I deal with on a daily basis because of my past, because of my trauma. I don't want to get too into that right now. A high majority of mental health conditions and often do stem from some kind of trauma experienced within that person's lifespan. So some of the biggest misconceptions about PTSD, trauma, you have to have been to war, which is just factually incorrect. Number two, you have to be a certain age or that I often get it said to me that I'm too young to have PTSD and I'm just like, mental illness doesn't give a f how old you are. Mental illness can affect people at any age. Number three, you must be violent. I can't even point to words how many times people have assumed that I'm going to be violent because I have PTSD. I'd like to take this moment now to tell you that not everybody with PTSD is violent. People who make assumptions about whether or not someone is violent are actually the cause of a lot of aggression shown within trauma. Number four, forget about it and move on. I don't think I need to explain but that is a dangerous thing to say slash assume slash trauma doesn't care trauma doesn't work like that so what are some things you should never say to someone with PTSD and I did make a tweet out of this and I'll put that here now these are some of the things that I put on that I think I'm actually listing all of them one your trauma is invalid two you're too young three that it can't have happened you don't look traumatized start saying you get triggered just don't think about it I don't even think I need to sit and explain to you why some of these things are very well horrifying to believe I don't think I need to sit here and tell you why those things are wrong to say to someone by all means ask people to talk about things but don't then stereotype and stigmatize them there are five things that I think are the most important things and that this is the reason I wanted to make this video but before I do that I just wanted to say that at the moment we are all going through a really hard time especially since most countries are on lockdown at the moment and the added anxiety for me is and other people in the UK is the government are giving police even more powers and as someone who has had a traumatic experience when it comes to police I'm terrified to go out. I've already been stopped once by police since this lockdown thing got put in place and I want to put this to you I don't go out unless I have to normally. Like, I, I don't like going out. I hate it because I get triggered at the best of time. But when you have police that will literally just stop you after you've had that happen to you before because of other reasons. When I lived in Lancashire, I couldn't go out the front door without getting stopped by police to do welfare checks. And eventually it led to an entire court case of which all charges against me got dropped and charges were brought against officers in that case. Now we're living in a time where police have got unbelievable powers at the moment. They can literally arrest someone for being out. And I'll put on the screen what I mean right now. And honestly, I'm terrified about it. In my experience, and believe me when I say this, I've had a lot of experience with police and them abusing their power. Giving them more power gives them more room to abuse their power. While I don't disagree with the fact that there's a lockdown, I do disagree with the fact that the police can just stop absolutely anybody for no reason at all. People are listening to what the government is saying. Let me put some pictures here to just show you what I mean. This is what London is like at the moment. Not what the news is spinning, not all of that. This is the truth. I don't understand the justification for giving police wider powers when they're already enforcing what is in place and that's working. Why then give them more power? Like I said, I live in London. I have been out this week to get my medication, to go for exercise, to get food, to go to a bank. I don't know. I just think we're living in a world where it's turning every country into a police state. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm against the proposed new changes. I respect the lockdown for what it is and why it is, but people are listening and I don't think there's any reason to give police more powers. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not a political channel. 
and I really can't be bothered to deal with political arguments, which I'm probably already going to get anyway now, but that's just my two cents on it. Here are the five things that I want you to remember when thinking about trauma, when thinking about the ID, when thinking about PTSD, when thinking about OSDD or complex PTSD, or even depersonalization, derealization, or dissociative amnesia, which is really common when you think, when it comes to trauma, you are almost pretty much guaranteed to experience some level of dissociation. Dissociation also happens when you have an anxiety attack. It is actually a very common thing to happen. There is a big difference between dissociating when you're having anxiety to having a dissociative disorder. They are two very different things and I would love to make a video in the future on that. If there's something you are interested in, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you have any other videos you'd like me to make, let me know in the comments. But anyway, on to the five important things for you to remember. Trauma can happen to absolutely anybody, any age, any gender, any working class, any country, anywhere. Absolutely every and anybody is a potential candidate to experience PTSD when they've been exposed to trauma. Trauma is subjective. Trauma varies person to person. One traumatises one person may not be traumatising for another person. Trauma does not work like a black and white piece of paper. Dissociation is what makes PTSD and trauma better. It's what helps us get through a day and it protects us. It's a body's natural instinct to go into fight or flight mode. Too much fight or flight and you end up dissociating. Associative disorders occur when trauma is there like continuously or when you're severely traumatised by something. The dissociation happens because the fight or flight system isn't enough. Triggers, no matter what they are or how they affect someone, they are all valid. Do not invalidate someone's triggers by making jokes saying I'm triggered because it's actually really f offensive. It's really offensive for people to say I'm triggered by this when in fact they're not. Triggered is not some cool word that you can just say to anyone and it have no meaning. You do not have any right to discredit anybody is traumatic experience. You do not know what that person has been through. Only that person knows what traumatised them. They no one else has room to discredit anybody for any reason. Discrediting someone's trauma not only damages their own recovery, it also puts them in a position where they're not getting taken seriously. And in many cases like that, it leads to suicide. And that's so sad. And I wasn't going to talk about this in this video, but it's not my notes or anything. But I had my entire life last year taken and put under a microscope by a group of people who don't know me in real life, who believe they know everything about mental health, who believe they know everything about medication. And it literally made me want to not even take my medication as prescribed just because I was sick of getting hated on for taking benzos. And in reality, it's not that big of a deal. Like, it's not. They're prescribed. It's not like I'm going to a street corner to buy flipping Xanax or something, which is illegal in the UK. I'm prescribed by a consultant psychiatrist, the Nazan Pam, and it has been a lifesaver for me. Like, I can leave the house and have a panic attack. I can get on buses and not have a panic attack. And just saying that is a big deal for me because a year ago, I couldn't go out. I was in hospital. This time a year ago, I was just about to enter, what, three months long admission? And that was scary because at the same time, I had people online talking shit about me. Number five, which is the most important thing in this video and is where I'm going to end the video. You did not deserve your trauma. 